So today we are talking about being centered. And um, I think what I'll do is I'll start off, I will talk about my, my client yesterday because she's a young girl. And when she first came to me, she was in a real state. I mean, in every area of life, emotionally, physically, spiritually challenged, um, just didn't know who she was, what she was, what she wanted. She's only 14. So, you know, she's going through the hormone changes. You know, it's that kind of cycle. And, um, you know, it's the, the, the parents and the child kind of thing as well, you know, so it can be challenging. And, um, but she's, she's transformed in just a couple of sessions. Like, like and I, I'm, I keep talking to her. I'm always there. She knows that if she needs to talk, I'm there. It's great. And she really loves that time. But anyways, yesterday she came in, she said, I have to admit, she said, I had a panic attack at school. And I said, right. And she goes, it's got, everything's got a lot better. She goes, but it did happen the other day. I said, okay. I said, so what did you do? She goes, well, by the time I'd asked to be taken out of the class, she said it was too late. And I was like hyperventilating and, you know, like in a real state and in the bathroom and just, you know, she got past that point, the trigger point. <laughs> so... So I said, her, okay, so what is your trigger point? What, what, what happens to your body? Where do you feel it? What can you feel? What happens before the point where you lose control of your breathing? Before the point of no return, basically. Because once that breathing goes, it's difficult to get right back into the flow, isn't it? If you can recognize the little symbols and the signs and the things that happen to you, um, then it's much easier to, to take control and to, to, to divert the situation and she said oh so firstly she said oh she goes oh my breathing goes all funny I said yeah no I said what happens before that and she goes well everything goes fuzzy around me I said oh okay so when everything goes fuzzy around you it's before the breathing she said yeah I said right that's the point that you're recognizing when everything goes funny at that point you've got to take control so I said at that point instead of waiting for it to all kick in Go to the teacher at that point when everything goes fuzzy, put your hand up, do what you need to do and say, I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. Please, can I leave the room? And I go outside because what I would usually say is to go outside, sit on the ground, look at nature, look at the trees, smell the air, smell the flowers, get grounded, you know, be centered. And this is another way of becoming centered to take notice of anything that's natural, anything that's real. Um, the smells, the, the, the colours, the nat naturalness, just bringing you back to noticing your breathing, just calming yourself down and just getting rid of, getting rid of the panic, getting rid of the fear. And she said, I'm not allowed to go outside. She goes, I'm not allowed to go outside, as in, like she goes, I said, so where do you go? She goes, I can go in the corridor. I said, right. I said, so what I want you to do at that point, when you see everything go fuzzy, I said, I'd like you to have something in your bag, like a little toy, something that you're comforted by. It's like a little colorful toy, something that's soft, that feels nice. You can spray some perfume on your favorite perfume, something like that. And at that point, when everything goes fuzzy, put your hand up, you go to teach that I need to. I need some space, I'm, I'm feeling a bit panicky. And go and sit in your corridor where you need to do. And it doesn't matter if you're not outside, but just get that toy out, something that's small that you can just, and just, just really focus on it and smell it and look at it and feel it and touch it and and just really concentrate on that that toy and just let everything calm down again because once you shift that focus and it's something that you can do it's something you can carry in your bag or you know carry in your pocket or something like that and once you do that you're bringing you back to reality and and all the the hurricane around you starts to disperse and you're back in the center, your bag. And I said, do you think she could do that? And she goes, yeah, I really think I can do that. So that was really good. And it, and it just came back to that being centered. And um, I think that centering feeling, that calmness, that thing that we can all do once we recognize those little triggers is so extremely powerful because we're taking control of our of, of we're taking control of our pursuit of who breathing of our breathing of our thoughts we're kind of guiding our thoughts and um and it allows you time to reflect just to self-reflect breathe and get back into a place of present and from the present everything 
just feels so much better because it's what's happening right now, what's important right now, and 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 it's dealing with that rather than everything, you know, she, lack of sleep, hormone changes, all of these things that she's done. You know, we've had hot weather, you know, so it's all of these things just all tied in together, adding to the extra noise basically so that was my little thing yesterday and then for myself when I talk about myself and um, at the dentist I've got I don't like I, I've got things I've got a thing about dentists <laughs> and Ethan had to go to the dentist the other week to get his teeth um it was one's growing through and he had to get his tooth taken out because one's growing through and it's got to come out so I was sitting there in the corner because it's all COVID, isn't it? Like, you're not allowed to go anywhere near anything or do anything. But I was sitting in the corner and Ethan's in the dentist chair and it goes back and I'm just breathing, <sighs> trying to concentrate on my breath and the chair's going back. And then all of a sudden he starts doing it because he had to numb the gum, didn't he, to get the tooth out. Well, <laughs> good God. So I'm sitting there, I'm trying to meditate, but then the sound's going off of the beep, beep, you know, when they're doing the, the anesthesia little thing around it. And I'm... I'm, I can feel myself like inside just getting more and more like this. I thought, I need to put my, I put my earphones in, right? I, I said, look, Ethan, I love you. I'm right here. I said, but I need to, I need to do this. So I put my earphones in, I put my music on and I was just there and I concentrated on my breathing. I was listening to my music and everything just felt a bit better. <laughs> no, it felt a lot better actually. And you know, I could see him. He, was, he wasn't even bothered by it. And I didn't want him to be triggered by my trigger, you know? So like, I had to kind of take control, but that's what I did. I just put my music on, started really just concentrating on my breathing. And um, we got through it. And, and he came out and he was laughing at me. He was going, mum, you're so funny. And I was going, I know, <laughs> but like, I know, I know my triggers as well. I know what happens to me, the feelings that I get when I start getting in that kind of like, and I get hot, I have hot flushes and, and I can feel it in my belly kind of like twirling around and, and I'm like, and then I hear the sounds and I'm like, and, and, and. so that's my point, I just have to stop. And I did, and that really works for me. So, and it can work for everybody. It can work for everybody. So let's go to, let's start with Susie, because you're there this so we're going to work around like this, like a circle. Susie, being centered. Oh, being centered. I kind of need that, you know. It reminds me, I think it's Mahatma Gandhi who once asked, was asked by reporters, what do you think about the Western civilization? And he answered, it would be a good idea. <laughs> So I think that would be my answer about being centered. That would be a good idea for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel that centered these days. And actually, that's why I suggested this, um, this subject, because I called Danielle yesterday. Well, actually, I asked, can I call you? Um, it, it was a very interesting experience. Well, I've been, I've, I moved houses and, you know, it's been a lot going on in the past, uh, apart from the covid the past year has been quite rough. So, and, and yesterday, when was it? Before yesterday, I have received a compliment from one of my clients who has become a friend and is a poet. And he wrote me a beautiful poem and he, he wrote me uh, all kinds of words of appreciations. And actually, I found that strange that that put me down. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't receive them. I said, what, what is he talking about? I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm nothing. So I, I could feel and I could hear this, these words in my head. Um, and so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I knew what to do, but you know, I preferred to call Danielle. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me a very, very, um, very interesting and powerful question. She said, correct me if I say it wrong, Danielle, please. She said something like, if you were your center or your essence looking at you or at somebody else going through what you're going through, what would you think about her? And so I took a few moments and, um, Actually, the first word that came to me is that you're fabulous. You're doing great. Like you're really an amazing person with everything that you've been through, with everything that you're doing. So, but I couldn't feel it. And so being centered, it's, um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a constant process. And if I am to speak theory now, uh, since we are at different speeds at the different levels or layers of our being, there is a, there is a, a certain... Um, speed for our physical body, certain set of laws, and then there's another speed going on in the mind, and there's another speed going on at the level of being or of the soul. 
then I think being centered is to be connected with this tree. And then one goes and runs faster than the other, then we kind of get a bit uh, defaced. And I think this is the feeling that I've been having the past couple of weeks because of this moving. Like I feel defaced. I'm not yet into, into my own zone of, of comfort. I haven't yet established a connection with the house and with the new habits here and everything. So I think being centered requires effort a constant effort and I think the daily sadhana I do my daily yoga now I have a client with me for a week um, and uh, we've been doing yoga together and at the end of the yoga practice we do this beautiful meditation which one day if you talk about meditation we can share maybe that would be a good subject to, to, to touch one day mm -hmm. and this meditation uh, we connect to the source we see the source outside and then we allow it to come down slowly through the chakra of the, of the head, like to the seventh chakra. And it stays there and then it goes behind the forehead and it illuminates from there and it goes in the, in the throat, illuminates from there and then it centers in the heart. So that's what I've been doing this week with my client and with myself, of course. And it feels really good because it's, um, um, it, it takes, it brings everything back in. I think feeling centered is when you are into your essence. In my personal experience, nothing else outside can actually bring you this feeling of centeredness. Nothing, no object, no relationship, no person, no job, no house is literally being able to be within you and allowing that line, that light or of the source, God, well, whatever we want to call it, to be and shine in your heart. And there's where the peace is. And I want to I wanna share with you a quote before I give you the word yeah. that I saw this morning from Muji. Uh, and uh, I found it quite cool. It says like this, it's true that what you feel is what you feel, but it is not true that what you feel is truth. So even though in your mind, those thoughts are telling you things about yourself, you know, your mind keeps judging yourself and, you know, uh, they may seem true and the, the experience seems true because it's real, but it's not the truth. And that's what I discovered yesterday with Danielle when she told me what, what is actually the truth about you. And that's, that's yeah, it. I am, I am doing great, actually. You just, yeah, you just need to be reminded of it. Sometimes. Yes, thought, yes. Because, you know, life can be completely hectic and, and just be a whirlwind. And, and you're, so, you, you're so resilient and you bounce back and you're doing everything. And sometimes you can just forget how incredible you've been. You know, look what you've done. Look what you've achieved. And, like, and, and when you're in that state of unrest, if you can just sort of like just zone out and just like, right, zone in even and just... What would what would my best friend say to me at this point? What would what would somebody what would my mother say to me? This is what I was doing saying with my other my other client as well. What would all these people say to me? And and what would I say to me? What what's real? And then then you get your answer. And then all of the rest you can put in. It's perspective, isn't it? It's perspective. Brilliant. So it's, oh, lovely. Right, Linda, you lovely angel. <laughs> <laughs> I only come on here for all the compliments. Oh, you know, right, you know. <laughs> you're in the right place. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So, thinking of your, I was listening carefully to your story about your girl and how you handled that. Um, years ago, and for a long, 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 long time, I would have panic attacks. And they are absolutely vile, absolutely vile. And they're different to an anxiety attack, panic attack, um, something you've no idea what it is you're going to die from, but you are going to die any minute now. That's the, the, the feeling that's in your mind and, and your body. Um, and I have no truck with them now at all and all I did I, I was fortunate it was one of those things Kate where it only took left brain logic to shift from it being black to being white I began to in, in a clear space in my life I began to teach relaxation workshops um, 
not just meditation, but all types of things you could do to relax. And so I studied, I read up about panic attacks. And it was as simple as this. Something sets you off. There is an initial trigger which sets you off into fight or flight. Your body produces a ton of, what's it called? Adrenaline. Mm -hmm. That sets your everything in motion. That makes your breathing go wrong. Your heart's pounding. You are frightened by that. So your body to help you out sends a ton more of adrenaline mm. and then you're even more frightened because everything's got worse and it set, keeps sending adrenaline so it's a spiral and I would notice I could understand this from experience too I would notice that sometimes they would so they would go away for two reasons one, when I let go, when I said in my head, well, I'll just die then. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I'll just, I'll just die then. And then it would go because I've stopped panicking and giving in. Um, another time it would, occasionally they would last a long, long time, hours and hours. Then it would stop from adrenal exhaustion because there was no more adrenaline to give. And that was quite a nice feeling because then in that state of adrenal exhaustion, everything was calm. There was nothing whatsoever to respond to a trigger. So, so I just saw the logic of this spiral that, oh, so we get frightened at the outset from the first symptom and then it all goes to pot. So we just need to not be frightened. Now I understand this. And I and never in all these panic attacks had I died. I've never heard of anyone die in a panic attack. <laughs> so it was that that logic that Kate teaches. Just just give your left brain an idea that it is not all black, that a little chink, and it go, oh right, it's not then. <laughs> it's not true then. And um and I began to have one. I was physically stressed, physically and mentally stressed during last year. Times were, were, were difficult and one began to come on. And um, my first symptom would be tingles, um, like shivery tingles around my body. And I was particularly stressed about... Um, about something about a health symptom at that time not able to sleep and it began to come on and I was just able as I'd done previous times to go oh I know what you are and cut it off there and so what I saw that you taught your girl to do is cut it off right at the outset wasn't it yes take control I mean, it doesn't matter how you take control of it whether it is by by this understanding that I've gained and and, and it, and it just went, goes no further for me or whether it is by by shifting your focus just yes, because all of your focus is on every single symptom that you've got isn't it and on how bad it is you're, you you can think of nothing else except how awful it is. So just get your focus. Um, I'm being centered. Yes, I think so. Then also, I don't know that I've got anything of my own today. So I'm going to add on to everybody else's. Oh, please do. Um, Susie's, um, I've, I've written down that being centered requires constant effort. And I can, I can understand that. I think being the way we want to be ought to require constant effort, didn't it? Why are we expecting a hall pass? Why are we expecting something out there to do this stuff for us? It made me think that perhaps we are, I don't know whether we're lazy or, or, or we're uninformed, maybe we're uninformed or a bit lazy, I'm a bit lazy, on 
putting this effort into life, into being what you want to be, into having the life you want to be living and living it the way you want to live it. I, I think until Susie said that, that I was expecting pretty a fair amount of it ought to be all right, surely. Surely, it ought, you know, we ought to have been given some kind of um, some kind of level already. And we haven't, have we? We, we, we have not. There, there is no, there is no sense. So, so what I think then from that, there is no automatic centeredness. We have to achieve that, attain that, don't we? And and for me, that that is a big that is a big surprise. <laughs> a big surprise. Really. It's interesting because, like, we put in you you have to put in the effort for any any mental state, any mental state that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. There's effort, whether it's conscious or subconscious, that is going into getting into that mental state. So. Yes, absolutely. You have to make the effort to get into the centre too. So mm -hmm. take and that I, control. And I see, I see, of course, in, in my clients, of course, if we've got clients, they are something is wrong. And, 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 and so now I see from this, now I see that, yes, something is wrong because they, they, let's be respectful because they didn't know what they have to do. Yeah, that's right. For things to be right. Yeah. And so it kind of turns things around a bit, doesn't it? So we're not, we're not, um, yes, we can remove things with NLP. We can remove things. We can destroy um, states and feelings. And, that, and I believe that is a good thing to do because we've collected a whole load of baggage. We've collected a whole load of uh, Facebook algorithms that, that have got no sense whatsoever and are keeping us unable to leave the house or, or, or unable to get in a lift or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but um, so we can do that. And I think we must do that. Let's, let's clear the ground. And then we need to build on it. Yeah. Which is, I'm always talking about Kate's course. That is what Kate's course does. And Kate's, Kate's, Kate's group is going to do. Because otherwise it is not going to come automatically. Truth. That's what I've got to say about it. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, something as simple as um, if you're in, in a panic state or, or not even in a panic state, no, that's not the right thing. If you are not feeling centred and you want to come straight back to centre quite quickly, you can do something as simple as running your hand like under a cold tap and noticing how it feels and, and um, then turning it to maybe warm and then noticing how that feels and, and literally just being mindful because mindfulness is very sim uh, similar to being centered and meditative, meditative. Is that the word? Meditative. <laughs> you know, it's all, it all comes down to the same thing. And talking of meditative, <laughs> God, look at me today. Um, Kate, the amazing Kate, is going to be doing, um, she's offered to do um, a technique for us all today. So we can all try it. And I'm really excited because, Kate, you are just flipping awesome. Your techniques. I always use your technique as well about the driver and the um, and you're in the car. Because I said that to my client yesterday as well. I said, you know, you, it's part of you that's trying to help you. There's, there's these panic attacks trying to protect you. But you just need to notice that and just say, look, I know you're there. I recognize that. <laughs> this is from Kate. Uh, you know, but you're sitting in the, in the passenger seat and you're driving. I'm taking control. If I need you, you're there. But until that point, I'm driving. And that's it. And that's a brilliant analogy, Kate. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, Kate, can we come to you? Yeah, sure. So I, I, I got a few things like I'd like to sort of follow on from what you said. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we'll do this practice together, which we can do just sitting down, just a simple like centering practice. But so what 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 you're all saying, I, I'm I'm hearing from all of you, especially like Daniel, you're talking about going to the dentist and stuff. It's like that is, it's a very sensory experience, isn't it? It's the sounds, there's the smells, there's the lights, all these sort of things. And they can, we can anchor 
that experience as being bad, you know, and so then we immediately, before we even get there, we're starting to get fearful, aren't we, about, about it coming up and what's happening. And it's, it tends to never be as bad as we think, does it, ever? And so it rarely is that. So usually we cope in the moment. It's, it's the worry about what might happen and you know, the monster in the closet kind of thing and you open it and there's nothing there. It's a little, little insect scrabbling about or something, you know, because we, we turn it into this great big thing in our minds, don't we? So it's all up here, isn't it? It's all this stuff that's going on up here in our heads. And we're not really thinking about anything that's going on from our chin downwards, are we? And that's... And when you get into like, you know, like running your hand under the water or smelling something like your favorite perfume or whatever it might be, then you're getting into your body, you're getting into your senses, yeah. you're getting out of thinking and into feeling. And so um, it's all about what are you, what's, what, what are you feeling and getting into your body? And, and that's, that's the way out as well. It's the way in and the way out. Because we get this feeling, we suddenly get this panicky feeling in our chest, maybe, or our breathing starts going funny. And then we start thinking about it. Oh, what does this mean? Is, am I ever going to, am I going to die? You know, as Linda was saying. And, and then we start thinking, and as Susie was saying, I was thinking all these things about, I don't deserve this, this praise and everything else was really absolutely you did. And it was just like, and when you sort of got yourself out of yourself, like you get a different perspective, as we were saying, then, then you look at it in a different way. So as Linda was saying, you know, well, okay, you know, what if, if it's just, if it's just this thought, then I'll change the thought. And that was it. Or if it's, if it's a feeling, then we, we know you can change feelings because they're not real either. Really, you can, you can change feelings. I can move pain all around my body if I want to. And so, and so it's, if I can do that, then maybe I could actually get rid of it completely, you know, just so there's all of these things that you can do when you decide to kind of like, it's a decision, isn't it? To take charge, as we were saying, and it's, and it's, and then the, the simplest way for me is to get into that centered feeling. What is that feeling for you? Knowing what that is. Yeah. Because some people don't, we've sort of kind of forgotten what it is. So finding where is it for you? And some people have in all sorts of places. It tends to be down in the gut. Um, some people are more in the heart centered and some people more go down to the gut where it's like this really sort of sense of being. And it's, it is our center, really, our gut, when you think about it, in terms of our, how, how tall we are. So it tends to be there and there's, that, there's a feeling there and it tends to be like an orangey yellow light for most people which is this just warms like sunshine. And it's when you can just focus on that feeling because yeah. you're saying, oh, it's not, you have to work at it. And yeah, you have to work at remembering that it's there, but I believe it's always there. Mm. Um, but you're right, we, we do have to make effort. You know, we can't expect to go through life and have all these things happen to us. Like every day, you know, you make, make a plan for the day and as soon as you get out of bed, it's changed because something's happened here and there. So. This life is always throwing us this stuff. And I believe it's a bit like we're walking a tightrope all the time. That's life. So you're walking a tightrope. You're trying to, you're being aware. Am I, am I balanced or not? If I'm not balanced, then I need to move a bit left or right with this pole. And, you know, I might be carrying a lot of burdens along with me and, and the pole might be unbalanced in the first place. So I need to get, take those off, which is what we do with NLP. Just let's release all of that old stuff. So I can just be free, freer to move and be more flexible and then taking another step, you know, and knowing what direction you want to go. And mm. so and that's and then you do it all again. Where am I now? Am I balanced or not? If not, get myself more balanced and then take another step. And that's that's life. And life is holding the rope and, and shaking it sometimes, you know, so. So that's what we have to deal with. And, and it does take effort and we have to learn how to do that. And, and how to do it for us, because we're all different. And so my way is not your way. And so um, that's why we have to have all these tools in our toolbox, isn't it? So that we can share these things with, with, with people and say, well, how about this? How about that? Or what, what happens? And then asking them what's happening for you right now, like the girl with the anxiety, panic attacks, then what was happening for her was very, very unique for her. And so she found she knew that what was that, that what happens just before she gets, she falls off the tightrope, you know, what was the, the moment she knew it was about to happen, or the bounce was about to go, then she could get herself back to balance on her own because she was still in control. Yeah. As soon as, but when the mind gets stuck in fear, then that's it, we're out, we're out of control. 
And then, so it's all about learning how to stay in control. And then what, what do you do when you lose it? And that's the other thing, like, it's all very well, but what happens when you lose it? It's all great having all these great, you know, sit and meditate and I'm loving calm and I can go on a se seven day quiet retreat somewhere, silent retreat and find my center and everything else. And I come back to my life and what do I do now when I'm back in my life? You know, so it's, it's what happens when you lose it, when you, you suddenly lose it and you, you're just angry and you just fly off the handle. And then it's, it's also learning how to do that. And that's a practice too. It takes a lot of practice. And there are ways that you can do that by purposely, like say you have an anger issue. One way to get yourself back to center once you lose it is practicing by just angering yourself a little bit and then trying to bring yourself back. You know, what makes you angry? Just slightly angry. Think of somebody who annoys you. Watch, watch your, your most hated politician on YouTube or something and actually oh, watch that you. person. And then while you're watching them, practice bringing yourself back to center. How do you do that? You know, where is that anger in your body? And you know, what can you, can you calm it down? Can you pour some water on it if it's really hot? Or, you know, you can, we can play around with all the sub modalities of it, can't we? And do all that sort of thing. So you can, you then... And then you ramp it up a bit. What makes you a little bit more angry than that? And practice then bringing yourself back until eventually you'll get to the stage where even when you totally lose it, you bring yourself back. But the other thing, the, um, the magic of that is when you do that, the more you practice it, the less likely you are to ever get angry in the first place. And that's the key because you're practicing being calm and then your body is more used to doing it for itself and it kind of just does it automatically after a while and you don't need the practice anymore and I that's what I found the more more work I've done with centering myself and working with all the sort of stuff that's taking me off balance with that tightrope then the more I've done that I find it quite hard to get stressed now it's a beautiful thing. And that it is, isn't it? And it's and, it and that's the thing. And it's sometimes like this is happening to me. And I sometimes am thinking to myself, I should be really stressed now. And I just don't even feel I can do. And that's that's just and that's practice. It's effort. And um, if you want it, you have to do the work. And that's can I say as well, there can be things that like what we're drinking or what we're eating that are causing extra things to our frustration. Because for me. Tea and coffee, caffeine. Um, I constantly didn't, I, I was drinking it all the time. I haven't drunk any for like, you know, two months now or something. And um, how I feel inside is totally different to when I was drinking tea and coffee. And I just didn't realise that that was a, my, it was a trigger for me. It was something that I was doing on a daily basis, which I had no, no concept of what it was doing to my body. And it was constantly putting me on, that edge, you know, so I was less tolerant. I was just less tolerant of everything. I mean, although I am, a, I'm a tolerant person and I really can control my feelings on the, on the majority of the time. I, it's been known to lose it a few times, I can't lie, but <laughs> I'm human, we're all human. But when I gave up the tea and coffee, yes, I had horrible withdrawals, but my whole, my whole, my whole, um, inside just it was it melted and the thing is with you Kate as well you you don't drink do you drink caffeine no you, well, you, not only now and again it's the, the key is to come off it and then just have it now and again just maybe two three times a week when if you need a boost then have it and you get a proper boost and then you come back to normal that's, it, that's the thing caffeine, it, it actually tires you out it's a yeah. bit like smoking it, it, it so you have to have it to get back up to normal again where everyone else is already at normal you're actually lower down because you haven't got that boost you need the caffeine you need the nicotine to get you up to where other people are that don't have it so that's the thing and the thing is we you know no one's saying to give up everything that you love like i'm not saying that at all you, don't <laughs> need to do that. you just need no. to have it not all the time and that's the key yeah moderation yeah, moderation. Because, and the thing is, it might be something, if you are feeling constantly on edge, it might be something as simple as what you're eating or, or, or drinking. It could be something as simple as that, that you don't even recognise and you're just constantly feeling maybe a bit like, you know, maybe that's just adding to your pressure. Absolutely. I mean, that's, Linda's mentioned my course and in that I talk about things like the effect of sugar. Sugar. I mean, blood sugar absolutely. level is absolutely massive for your mood, absolutely. Your mm -hmm. sleep has to be good. 
Yeah. If you don't sleep well, then you have no resilience to stress and the slightest thing will stress you out. Like yeah. last night, my husband was, said something to me and I was kind of like getting quite annoyed. I noticed myself getting a bit annoyed and I thought, what's this? And I thought, I'm just tired. Yeah. It's normally, this is stupid. This is nothing. But it was like 9.30 at night. I was tired and it just wasn't the time to have that sort of discussion because... Yeah. So, so like, and so once you know when your 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 times of high resilience are, which are normally in the morning when you're most rested, then that's your time to have awkward discussions with people. So you can, once you know yourself, you can plan. That. Yeah, can I add something here? Because you talk about food. Uh, of course, it's important, and the centered state comes if from the Ayurvedic perspective with the balance of the balance of the doshas. So the more you are in imbalance of your own dosha, the more you, you, know, you risk to go up and down in the emotional scale, you know? So it's very important to know yourself, to know your type and to know what's good for you because coffee once in a while might be good for some people, but for some people it's best not to have it at all. And for some people it's good to have it daily because of your body type to compensate for the tendency of your body. So indeed, most of, most of these uncentered moments come from the body. And this is where we're being harsh with ourselves, me included, where I think, oh, no, but it's actually my poor body, you know, tired after working hard all these weeks and moving furniture and painting and doing all kinds of stuff. Wow. Of course, I'm exhausted. And of course, I see life in a different way. So it's very, very important to work with the body and, uh, and start from there and then go on and judge yourself about your, um, your anger tendencies and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Absolutely, you've, you've you've been incredible. You literally have moved every, moved all your whole house, yeah, world, your whole world. You've done it, and you've done it on your like pretty much on your own, haven't you? And yeah, like, well, well, when within within a week. <laughs> like, I mean, that's a, that's a so that's that's the body. The body needs to be looked into, and we really need to understand what is like how it functions and what are its tendencies and and learn how to bring these tendency down and master them. I prefer the word master than control because control, I don't like control. Much. Yeah, no, I understand that. To, to, right. master, to master these elements and to understand how these elements work and put these in balance and then it will be easier to deal with the emotional part. Yeah, it's just listening to your body, isn't it? It's listening to what your body needs and not ignoring it because your body's going to give you messages all the time. If you're tired, yeah. if you're tired, go to sleep. Like, and I know it's not easy. Like if you've got, I don't know, you're at work or if you're, or you've got like loads of kids or, you know, or you're just in a stressed environment, it's not easy to just go to sleep. You can't sometimes, but you can make the decision to maybe take a little break, have some new time and go to bed earlier at the night time so that, you know, organize, ask for help, ask someone to help you. For little, you know, it's so important. Otherwise, we're running ourselves to the ground, and 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 then it stops. Then everything stops, you know. So if you don't listen, your body will just keep sending out all these signals to keep reminding you to do these things until until it just says, right, that's enough, and then then you can't do anything else because then you've just stopped. That's that's the breaking point. So yeah, yeah that's that's, I mean, that's burnout, isn't it? That your body will eventually will make you stop if you don't yeah. listen. And so it's learning to listen in, listen to those signs like that, like with the panic attack thing. That's you know, nice. Sign. Know the sign before you break down. You know, mm. get yourself back to balance before you fall off the tightrope. That's that's what you've got to learn to do. And it and it's what it what is it for you? Mm. So that's the key thing. So would, would you like to try this? I'd this love morning? to try this. Yeah, let's do it. It's, it's all about getting into your body. So we'll do it sitting down because it's because we're all sat down. It's easier. Yeah. You can. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of good to do it standing up too. Cause it's a bit more relaxing to do that. And um, and it's all about getting into the body because I, I study embodiment. It's part of it's like changing your mind and your feelings and your thoughts by using your body. And so it's kind of like a halfway between yoga and NLP kind of thing. It's like a really cool practice. Okay. And in, in embodiment, um, there's a guy called Mark Walsh who does, a, he's got loads of videos on embodiment. You can find loads of stuff online from him. And um, he talks about using this ABC system. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do the ABC of centering. Amazing, amazing. Okay. With a few bits added on, which is the bits that I do. So first thing you need to do, and you can do this with your eyes open, your eyes closed, is just 
have you got your what's your where your feet on at the moment are they on the ground on the chair I don't know what they, where they are but just kind of just notice your feet whatever they're being supported by right now and if you're standing up then you could do have your your feet hip, hip width apart so they're kind of like nice and solid and you could just notice the ground supporting you so that's the first thing you can do just just tuning into that sometimes is enough to calm you and center you just noticing your feet on the ground mm. and just feeling supported by the earth you know that that can be very powerful so just tuning into that and then you can just say hello inside and just notice what is happening so this is the a this is awareness now so we're just getting aware of what's happening in my body right now so just just sort of have a look around look around at your feet come up to your up your legs and notice what's happening and a lovely noticing you can do is noticing your breathing especially like the opening and closing of your ribs when you breathe it's a bit like opening an umbrella and closing again because it's not we tend to just notice the feeling of the breath at the front of our chest but what about our back right around our back our ribs are moving there too and just can you notice that right now just let the umbrella open and close so on to the b now which is breathing balancing so just breathing first just noticing your breathing in your chest and then you could just put a hand on your chest and another one on your belly and just notice then what happens when I really just relax my belly because so ideally your belly would move more than your chest would when you're properly relaxed and we tend to hold our belly in a lot when we breathe we hold a lot of tension in our belly and so that diaphragm needs needs to be relaxed to breathe properly and deeply so you can just notice your breathing with that and just one way of relaxing very deeply is just to breathe out slightly longer than you breathe in. Only slightly more, because every time you breathe in, we actually go into a slight stress state. Every time we breathe out, we go into a relaxation state. So if you're breathing out more than you breathe in, then you have to be relaxing. And then the other balancing thing we can do, be doing for B is just noticing where you are in space now. Are you a bit more forward than you are back? In, in which case, centre forward to back. Just be more centred there and then do the same with left and right. Are you a bit unbalanced that way? You know, think of your shoulders. Think of how, you, how, you're, how you're sitting right now. Are you a bit left or a bit right? And then there's up and down as well. You know, could I be a bit more lengthen my spine a little bit and make myself a bit more centered that way? So that's another way, just getting into your body and just noticing what's happening in your body. Again, let's notice now you're not really thinking at all now. You're just focusing on your body and that's the beautiful thing about centering when you get into your body and just notice what's happening. And now we move on to the C. So we've had the awareness, we've had the breathing and the balancing. And now we're getting into the C, which is just core relaxing now. And so we're gonna start from the top of our head and just really relaxing our eyes. And if your eyes are open, then you could do that peripheral vision so you, that softens our vision and that's a way of relaxing our eyes and if your eyes are closed then just imagine the muscles around your eyes are just getting heavier and heavier so even if you wanted to open them you almost just couldn't do it now because they're just so heavy and relaxed and then we're moving down the face now to our jaw where we hold so much tension and just 
letting that go a little bit, a bit, bit slacker in the jaw. And if you put the tip of your tongue against the back of your front teeth, that really relaxes your tongue as well. Because your tongue, when it's relaxed, is actually stuck against the top of your palate, against the roof of your mouth. That's the relaxed version of your tongue. And then moving down now, taking that relaxation down the back, the back of your neck and around your throat. Just relaxing now all the way down, noticing now your shoulders to the base of your neck and out to your shoulders and whatever you might be carrying on those today, just imagine just letting those go a bit more and everything can just slip off those shoulders and fall onto the ground and just get, dissolve away. You don't need to carry that round with you today. That can just go as well. And just letting your shoulders relax. And open too. Now if they're a bit too forward, then that's gonna restrict your breathing. So just putting your shoulders back a little bit, opening up your chest and noticing how much more easily you can breathe when your shoulders are back. Something we do, we, when we tense, we tend to go forward with our shoulders. So another quick way to relax is and just center ourselves. Let's just put your shoulders back and breathe. And then down to our chest now, just noticing that again, the opening and closing of that umbrella as you breathe. And then taking that down, all the way down, down to your belly that relaxed breathing. You're really letting your belly hang out now because that's, we don't do that, but if you notice a baby when it breathes, its belly is lovely and full and open. It just breathes so easily. And one thing you can do now is one, beautiful thing to do now is just while you're just sitting in this relaxed state just the other thing with C now is connection just connecting now and just maybe think of somebody now who makes you smile and just think of them and allow your heart kind of to open just with warmth and love for that person who just makes you smile And when you're into that, that feeling, you could take your hand onto your heart and really feel that feeling. And you could then rub down from your, from your heart down to your belly. And you're just taking that down, one hand after another, just bringing it down now, taking from your heart down to your belly and just, just rubbing down heart to belly, one hand at a time. And that's just another way of taking that feeling down. Just connecting your heart with your belly. That, those wise centers, our heart is very wise in terms of feelings and emotions. And our gut is very wise in terms of intuition and, and that connection with the source. As Susie talks about that beautiful connection that we have with all things that are just warm and full of love and energy and light, all of those things. And some people, a lot of people that, that suffer with anger can be, a, can be a lovely experience, just rubbing from the heart down to the gut. It's a lovely feeling. And then now just, just think of you, yourself, and just gratitude for you and all, imagine just thinking about all the things you've done in your life and the achievements that you've made and how amazing you are just you being you, messy and imperfect as we all are, but amazing anyway. So just now, one thing, beautiful thing you can do to finish is just to give yourself a hug. So you put one hand on your shoulder and the other hand and under your arm, sort of like hugging. So you're hugging your heart. And if you like, you can put your head to one side onto your hand that's on your shoulder and and just give yourself a hug and you can sort of rock yourself a bit left to right as well, which is quite nice. So just giving yourself a beautiful hug. 
just caring for yourself right now, this amazing self. And then whenever you're ready, just come back to now. And just noticing how you are now compared to how you were when you started. Yeah. And what made the difference for you? What was the thing? And there'll be one thing that really worked for you. I mean, for me, putting my shoulders back is a massive one for me. That was beautifully worded. Yeah. Focusing on the breathing. I, I, I used to do yoga years ago and, and I had no patience with the breathing. I never did the breathing anyway. And I had no patience with it. And and I, I kind of feel as if it's a bit, if that is all you've got, you know, focusing on your breathing, then you're in a bad way. And, uh, <laughs> And, and and then and then this last I don't know year or two, um, I've derived great benefit from that focus, just focusing on it. That was that was very nice then, and and even even counting, just a, a not a lot of focus on the numbers, but counting so that I could know how to do the longer breath out. Mm. That was lovely. The connection, the connection was really great, wasn't it? And sending out, I was thinking of you and sending you all <laughs> the hug. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the truth, you make me happy. You were, well, you just add to my world. I'm so lucky and I feel a lot calm. I feel calm. Mm. It was a lovely, oh my gosh, it's been an hour and it's been a wonderful hour. How does mm. it come through? Oh. That was the most beautiful ending to this hour. I don't even want to leave. <laughs> I want to stay. I want to stay. Oh my gosh. Has anyone else got anything that they wanted to say? Because I think that was just wonderful. Well, indeed, I think breathing is one of the keys to get there. And uh, um, there's plenty of uh, pranayama techniques that don't require too much time. I just thought the client that he's here with me for seven days and... Uh, and um, she's dealing with several things and uh, that the best way to, to go about it, apart from everything else that we're doing, I taught her a couple of breathing exercises, which are very simple. And it takes literally, I don't know, maybe one minute, not even, and it puts you instantly into this. By the way, after we talked, Daniel, that's what I did. I did a breathing and it helps. Good. But the thing is, I think the hardest thing to do when you are, out, uh, out of center is to remember that you could do something about it that's the thing if you remember and if you get yourself to do it it works there's so many things tapping works breathing works there's so many things that work mm -hmm. but yeah, lots, lots get, you get yourself to do it you know that's the thing to do it systematically to do it preventively I do it every day i do my yoga every day when my client was even better because it too is different and there's the energy there Mm. But even so I do my yoga every day and, and despite that because we were saying that uh, life is like this tightrope and uh, beyond everything that we have and carry with that, within us and within our bodies there is the external factor there's the external noise and in a society as ours where we're literally bombarded and it's like there's no way unless you live in a forest somewhere or maybe somehow like me in a tiny little village that there's nothing going on that you can find some peace but else we're constantly under the influence of all these external factors, social media, TV, uh, computer, phones and everything. And it's going to be, it's not that I'm negative or anything, but it could get harder and harder. So the more you invest in, in yourself and in learning tools on how to deal with these things, the easier it will be because it's not going to get any easier. Right. You know, this, the technology will make it easier for us. It's a, it's an utopia. It will not, because human beings need to be with themselves and with the humans and with nature. So the more we're going to create interfaces between us and, and uh, others, the more difficult psychologically it will become. So just, you know, just be careful and, and try to keep something going, something human going. Oh, 
it's so and not take it for granted that you have it when you have it that's the problem isn't it because yes. we have it and we take it for granted until we lose it and we lose it big time and then mm. then we get people coming to us and what what we all want is to, is to prevent this from happening this is why we do this now so mm. do some practice as a prevention for the future because it will come mm. if you don't do it mm. that's the thing i think there's so, very few people that go through life without any kind of emotional thing going on when they could have done with this practice ready for when it happens mm. and thank you kate for that so, yeah. so what 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 we can say now then is that the moment we're looking for when you were looking asking your client danielle for what is the moment before we're looking for the moment before we feel we've lost power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that would be that she she identified that moment didn't she in a panic attack you've like yes once you've started down that spiral and your breathing is upsetting you you have lost power yeah um fortunately i've been able to take it back but you you don't want to you don't want to have to to get you don't want to you want to deal with it as soon as possible don't you really and because it knocks on if you feel powerless then then it can ruin your whole life because you can begin to feel powerless and useless and rubbish in 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 everything so yes we need to be looking for that moment that a workout takes some time to work out whenever whatever happens to you i'm going to be doing it on anger whenever it whatever it is happens panic or anger or depression or whatever it is that happens look for what is the moment just before it's too late that's right and in the darkness know that that light will always conquer it and that's when you're going to find that light you can find that light because it's in you so you can conquer everything on that note i wanted to say a massive thank you gosh that was incredible <laughs> that was absolutely incredible anyone that's watching i hope you got value from this because god i feel so relaxed and so calm and it was wonderful um anyone anyone that you want to um contact we're here we are here for you. I've got to get my brain back in gear. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to list everybody's contact details in the notes. So please do, if you need any help at all on a one-to-one -one level, we're all here to speak to you. Um, oh, they're all incredible people that I'm surrounded with here. I'm so grateful and lucky to have these beautiful women in my life. And, um, yeah, get in touch with us. Listen to our podcast every week on a Friday. Share and... Um, help other people feel great because we all deserve to feel great that's the most important thing to know we all deserve it yes so on that note have a beautiful weekend i'm going to sign off live i'm staying with you guys and um take care yeah remember realtherapypodcast.com forward slash follow all right bye <laughs>